All right. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of uh, The Tyranny of Dragons. Yes, this is the first officially published book, uh, a hardcover adventure from Wizards of the Coast for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, we're actually coming to the end of this particular campaign. Um, the actual book campaign goes on. Uh, and on and on, and eventually uh, really bad stuff happens. And uh, I don't know too many, I don't know too many groups that have actually completed um, uh, the full campaign and won because the deck is stacked massively against you. Um, but we've been going off book, to be perfectly honest, we've been going off book for most of the time we've been playing this campaign. So uh, we're coming to the end of this story, and we will be starting a brand new story uh, probably in the next month or two here. Uh, same players, but they'll be playing different characters in a different world. It'll be entirely custom, um, give them a little bit more freedom, and give me a little bit more freedom to be able to focus more on um, you know, character stories and you know, telling a good story as opposed to following a hardcover adventure that don't get me wrong really cool adventure um but uh yeah uh there was a call for you know a little bit more control and so yes we're getting close to the end so to kind of bring people up to speed because it has been a little bit of time since these guys have been together uh due to holidays and and all that fun stuff that surrounds that so you guys have been tracking the cult of the dragon They've been taking all these uh, treasures and, and, and jewels and money type stuff to this uh, abandoned castle called Castle Nirtar uh, on the edge of the Mare of Dead Men, which is just outside of Neverwinter uh, in the northern uh, Sword Coast. You guys on your way there killed off some lizard men, and uh, one of them surrendered to you. And uh, I believe his name is Snapjaw. Uh, he said that as long as you don't needlessly kill all the lizard men, uh, he will help you get into the castle. Uh, and uh, help you to be able to overthrow uh, the, the purple ones is what he called them. Or the ones who kneel. Um, and so after getting there, you guys have a slight disagreement with the uh, lizardmen guards that are standing guard. And for some odd reason that no one can explain, they turned into red paste. It doesn't seem like it was anybody's fault. Um, we're not here to assign blame, Altier. But, um, yeah... Uh, so that happened. Uh, you guys did send Enna forward to kind of scout, found out that the, uh, Barbican, the, the kind of front headquarters that you guys are going to have to go through, uh, is far enough away from the castle proper that if some battle happens there, the people in the castle prob proper won't probably won't be aware of it unless they sound the very large drum that's on the second floor uh, and use it to call reinforcements which will wake up the entirety of the castle and you guys will have to deal with a full force altogether um, you do know there are bullywugs in there there are lizardmen in there that may or may not fight depending on how persuasive you can be and how persuasive uh, snapjaw can be and you know that there are culty, uh, culties, wow, cultist members in there. Um, and the cultists have been known to use a brand new breed of creature uh, called a guard drake um, in other places. So you can be fairly certain that there's going to be at least a couple guard drakes in there. Um, beyond that, you really don't know a whole lot. Um, but time is ticking away. Time keeps on slipping, 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 slipping into the future of your death. You're gonna die like an eagle. 
Anyway. Um, so, yeah. You guys are outside the castle. There are dead lizard men around you. Uh, again, to the north is uh, the bully hu- uh, Bullywog um, kind of mud huts. Um, and you've also been told that their pet giant frogs live there as well, though are nearly impossible to distinguish from rocks and stuff like that until they're attacking you. And then you have the portcullis that leads into the Barbican, um, which will eventually lead into the castle proper, which is where the cult has their base. Beyond that, you guys don't know a whole lot. So, what do you want to do? I thought Altier sabotaged their drum last time. We were planning to. We didn't get to that yet. Yes, that was, that was part of a plan. Uh, in order to do it, though, however, uh, you're going to have to get him to uh, the drum to sabotage it. So, oh, that's you... right, because I can make two people invisible for that. I don't know if we want to just have two people try and go up there and sabotage it. <laughs> two Roll people. me an Arcana check, Valdus. It's been a while. Let me check my gun. Okay, plus 10. Uh, how does the 30 sound? <laughs> 30? Uh, yeah, you know all magic ever. Um, you get the idea that uh, the regular invisibility spell has its limitations. And one of those limitations is if you attack uh, or take an action like that, um, the invisibility spell wears off. Um you're relatively certain that sabotaging a drum is intricate enough that it would cancel the illusion magic cloaking him. Um, so while he could get to the drum unseen, theoretically, he still makes sound. He still has a mass. Um, light just basically bends around him. Um, so he can still be... Uh, with a high enough perception check, they can they can still spot him. Um, and once he gets hit or once he makes an attack, it's gone. But um, yeah, you, you you think there's a there's a pretty good chance that he could get to the drum as soon as he starts to try to do something to disable the drum. More likely than not, he will be visible to everyone. What, how many, do we remember how many when he was when Anna was scouting were on the bottom floor up there? Anna got a really good count. And the DM totally knows that. There were ten bullywugs and I think four giant frogs. On the lower floor, and then on the upper floor, there were nine bullywugs. So you're talking a grand total of 19 bullywugs between the two floors and, a, and four giant toads. All right, my thing just decided to reset on me. Roll 20, we love you. We love you so much. Okay. So that's going to be a lot of fighting if we do it that way. Yeah. Don't know if we can avoid that much fighting, though. Well, again, you have... One of the things Anna did notice while she, uh, she was going through this stuff... They do not look particularly alert. They look bored. Uh, the ones that were in the upper Barbican, half of them were asleep. Um, for some bizarre reason, a castle in the middle of nowhere, just outside the territory of a black dragon, people don't tend to visit much. I know, weird, right? Somebody... Somebody's got to get uh, talk to the local travel agents. 
Um, so there's a good chance that um, you might be able to thin the herd in numerous ways, but you have bored and unattentive guards. So you can use that to your advantage. How you do that is up to you. Does anyone have any ideas aside from just mass combat? Some type of illusion spell, maybe? I dress up like a Pied Piper and and play a flute and lead them all away from the castle. <laughs> I'm not sure. I have a flute. Because... You guys do know, as far as politics are concerned, the uh, Lizardmen and the Bullywugs don't get along because the Bullywugs are higher up in the hierarchy and they enjoy bossing around the Lizardmen. And then, obviously, the uh, cultists are the highest in the hierarchy. So. Well, I still am wearing that cultist robe, technically. But I can't talk for shit, so... One of us still has a pristine mask, too. And I have a purple one of your purple robes is bloody. I can't remember who who has the bloody robes, but I, that's that's probably me, Anna. Uh, I don't have any. Yeah, but I got my robes. Oh, okay. So yeah, yours would definitely be pristine. Um, we could always do go get help. <laughs> I'll pretend to be injured. Bullis can escort me up to the door and say, quick, go get help. And then as they're turning around, he hits them with a fireball. You, you okay, forget yeah, I just want to alert everybody. As I, was say, I, thought, I thought the end of that one was he picks you up and throws you at the bad guys. <laughs> yeah, two things wrong with that. One, I have negative strength modifier. Two, because I multiclass, I don't have fireball. <laughs> And three, that's very loud. Yeah. Wait. Better idea. I will turn into a small frog. You can throw me, so and the then plan. From there, I will turn into a rhinoceros. <laughs> Fastball special rhinoceros. Why um, am I throwing you? I you <laughs> have used one of your transma uh, transformations today to sneak in, Anna. Uh, Yes. That is true. So you only um, have two total. Yes. But uh, I snuck in around noon, correct? Uh, sure. Sure. So I figured we were waiting until after dark, so I was, I, I was expecting to get a short rest in. Do you get him back on short rests? You get him back on short rests. Okay. If you guys want to take a short rest, you can. Um, I'm going to let you know right now, uh, things are happening. So if you want to take a short rest, you can, that means they get an additional hour. And due to the fact that you killed the, the front guards, um, the longer you take, the more likely it is they're going to send replacement guards out. A shift change could happen. I don't think we should rest. <laughs> no. Yeah, there I mean, I've thrown two ideas out there. Diplomatic with the cultist robes, or we just go and gun blazing <laughs> while Altier runs to the drum. Or we do it. We will try to get that 
That didn't go well the first time. I think at this point we have better odds allying with the Bullywogs against the Lizard Folk. <laughs> <laughs> But something tells me with our group, that's not mm. going to happen. <coughs> Doubtful. <coughs> we end up uniting up and making their alliance stronger than ever. <coughs> they unite yeah, we all the die. Hand. I have just... You guys, you basically create the Avengers <laughs> from Bullywugs, Cultists, and Lizardmen. <laughs> the Animal Avengers arc. So am I getting turned invisible or what? I think that's happening regardless. You can get up to the drum. It's just a matter of what are we doing with the fact that we're going to be fighting, what, 20 plus people? Hey, I do have this tan bag of little fuzzy things. We could use it, maybe throw one in there as a distraction. So as you guys are having this conversation, um, the hairs on the back of your neck start to stand on end. Um, which is not on camp, which is not an uncommon thing to happen when a spell is being cast. Um, but no one around, like you can see pretty well around you, no one around you is casting spells. And all of you felt this wave of kind of magical energy radiating from uh, the area of somewhere around the castle strong enough that it affected you all. Um, which, of all this, you don't need an arcana check to know. That means something big is happening. And shortly after you guys feel this wave of magical energy, the ground itself beneath you starts to rumble and shake ever so slightly. Not enough to make you lose your fitting or anything like that, but it's kind of like it's buzzing. Whatever we are going to do, we have to do it now. I got a bad feeling about this. Was there a way yeah, into the... Can't make it. Uh, I think we're just going to have to go and deal with whatever happens because I don't have any other ideas. I don't think being diplomatic is going to work because we're kind of short on time. Yeah. All right. So, is uh, who do we want to go sneaking up towards the uh, drum? Giselle here by himself. Did the two of us go? Oh, man. And there were no other entrances into the castle. Uh, no, the castle itself is built basically on its own little kind of rock island. So come here, Monster Manual. Um, it's kind of built on its own rock island, and the bar, uh, the barbicade, uh, is the only thing that is actually on land itself. Uh, so yeah. Um, from your knowledge, either you have to climb a wall to get in, which means traver traversing either over or through the, um, moat, which does not look like an enjoyable experience, uh, or you go through the barbicade. Cause again, you have the barbicade and then you have like a hundred foot long bridge hallway that goes into the keep itself. So. So we're fighting regardless. I'd take way too much time and burn too many of my spells for us to all get up to the drum with the chance of not being seen. Uh, if anyone would like to, they can roll a. N uh, mm, what are they? Yeah, I'll let you roll a nature check. See what you know about bullywugs. 
Okay. Uh, Fifteen. Not a whole lot. I'll just say that. Twenty-five. <laughs> if I'm doing math correctly, yes. Fourteen. All right. Twelve. Uh, so Valdis, you know, Bullywugs, not known for their stamina, not known to be like super, super dangerous. Uh, their biggest danger is in numbers. Um, giant toads, a little bit more so dangerous. Um, but, uh, you get, uh, you get a good idea that you guys could probably clear through a room of 10 Bullywugs relatively quickly. Like they're not they're not a uh, a kind of creature that you're you're particularly terrified of attacking. Um, giant toads take a little bit more of an effort, but with all five of you guys, you could probably take them down without too much difficulty as well. So Altier, do you want to go up into the drum by yourself, or do you want someone else to go with you while we clear the valve bottom? I'd rather go solo and then have you guys attack as soon as you know you hear the combat start yeah probably a bad idea all right let's do that all right <laughs> so valdis casts invisibility on altier altier you fill your skin uh, kind of have almost elect- an electric charge on it as you look down at your hands you can't see them anymore um, before he goes, I want to cast Enhance Ability on him. Okay. And give him Cat's Grace. All right. So you now uh, can purr, and <laughs> if someone scratches your butt, um, it immediately rises into the air. Um, <laughs> so you now have, I believe that's advantage on agility-based checks, right? Dexterity checks, and you don't take any damage from falling 20 feet or less. If it's incapacitated. So if if you need to jump off the top of the barbicade, you're totally fine. Because it's okay. only about 20 feet. I guess I'm stealthing up there now. All right. I'm assuming everyone else is getting into uh, getting into position then. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. All uh... right. Uh, which D20s do I want for this? Let's see, this one, one that has 20 20s. This one. That was I, need just a one. I wanted to get Will Wheaton as a gag gift a D20 custom I... 1920s and one one just to test that theory. I rolled a 29 for my stealth. Right, hold on a second. There is a ton of these guys to keep track of. All right, we're going to start with it. Uh, I would like everyone to roll for initiative for me. Sure, I'll use a different die for that. You can keep that stealth roll because it sounded pretty good if I remember correctly. Yeah. Oh, yes. Wow. Already rolling super good. I like adding intelligence to initiative instead of dex. It makes me happy. Don't. Hey, Valdis, what's your AC? Uh, I think 15 right now. Okay, just curious. Because I have the medium armor on or whatever. Okay. Is that a lore wizard thing? Yeah. Well, he's a cleric, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he might be... Oh, the armor. Yeah, yeah. The... What first level nature clear? Oh wow, they're not that 
crazy either. I was thinking giant. I I mixed up giant frogs and giant toads. I always do that. Uh, you remember Valdis with your crazy high number. You remember giant frogs really aren't that big a deal either. <laughs> okay. giant, giant toads are a pain in the ass. Because <laughs> they swallow you. Giant frogs are just annoying. Uh, so, Altier, what you got? Initiative, 19. Yep. Anna, what you got? 15. Baldus, what you got? 19 as well. Ollie, what you got? 15. Wow. <laughs> Lillian, <laughs> right. uh, do you get a 15 or a 19? Uh, <laughs> well, you fail. Uh, I gotta. Why did you guys have to fight things on like two opposite ends of the book? <laughs> Giant frogs are like on the other side. Bookmark them. Yeah, that would imply that I have a bookmark. Or just a post-it, a piece of paper or something. That would imply I'm prepared. <laughs> <laughs> hey, never mind. My friend's uh, player's handbook is like that. He has everything. It's like, here's the sorcerer tab, here's the wizard tab, just everything. Like, there's more tabs than pages at that point. See, it, it used to be, before my memory became Swiss cheese, I would simply just memorize the stat blocks for the monsters I was going to be using. Because oh, I, could, I could memorize... Uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm not talking, like, full-on stat blocks. I would memorize, like, their attack bonus... Um, how much damage each attack did, and if they had something special, and their hit point armor class. Um, and I could do that with a couple dozen monsters without too much difficulty. Judge Wapner um, 430, Judge Wapner 430. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was an actor. I was, like, my entire job was to memorize shit. Uh, yeah, I understand. All right, so Altier, um, what was your stealth check? 29. There's no reason for me to roll. There is nothing. <laughs> a natural 20 would not see you. <laughs> you have disappeared from this time-space continuum. Um, you have no, uh, no issue getting up to the drum itself. Everyone else you know is waiting outside for you to sabotage this drum. Um, you may not be a bard, but you understand how a drum works. It is uh, a piece of cloth or leather or something that is stretched across uh, an echoing chamber. In this case, it is a very large log. So this particular drum could probably be heard from a pretty far distance. But the way it works is whatever is stretched gets hit with a mallet and vibrates. And if you perforate it, it doesn't work anymore. Um, because the vibrations die because of the perforation. The whole point of the the drum head is for it to be solid. As soon as there are holes in it, it no longer works. So sabotaging the drum could be as simple as you poke it with something sharp. I'm going to pull out a dagger and poke it with something sharp. <laughs> okay. Uh, make me an attack roll. Uh, 24. You miss. It's a really armorful drum. No, go ahead and roll me damage. <sighs> Eight. All right, that's good enough. So um, you're up there, and uh, you sit there, and you plunge the dagger in, and you draw it across. And when you first, when the dagger first hits it, you can hear the starting of sound coming from it because an object has impacted the drum head and is designed to vibrate as soon as it pierces though the vibrations kind of end and you drag it through a little bit to make sure that there isn't really a usable part of this as soon as your dagger pierces it however you are visible and you can see of the uh 
nine uh, Bullywugs up there. Um, uh, five of them are sleeping, and the other four kind of casually keeping watch. And there's one that's no more than about ten feet away from you, uh, who's casually keeping watch, and you just kind of wink into existence, and he looks at you very strange and then he looks at the dagger in your hand and he takes out a mallet and starts running towards the drum head itself realizing that he's running towards you and just starts screaming and everybody else on top of there starts to wake up but it looks like it's going to take them a little bit of time to really do anything so we're going to start at top of initiative. We have Altier and Valdis uh, actually doing this uh, simultaneously. Uh, so who wants to go first? Do you want me to start Valdis since I'm like grambling it up on the top floor right now? Yes. <laughs> All right. So the one who's like screaming towards me, I'm going to mm -hmm. stab him with my dagger. <laughs> go for it. Uh, 16. Uh, 16 definitely hits. 7 piercing. Alright. So as you come up, uh, as you come up towards him, he's screaming, he's screaming, and you sit there and you plunge the dagger uh, into his side and he falls back and you can see uh, this uh, bright red blood started to spill out of him and he looks really rough. But he's still there. He's trying to scream to alert his friends even more. But uh, the breaths are coming out more labored and things like that. Uh, but he's still upright. I'm going to punch him. Okay. Uh, 17. Uh, another hit. Roll damage. Seven, seven bludgeoning. All right. So after uh, doing that, he's sitting there. He's like, rah, rah, rah. you come around with a roundhouse kick. Smack him, you he, uh, hear a uh, sickening crunch uh, as the bones in his neck stap, snap and he hits the ground. As he does that, you can see nine uh, or eight other Bullywugs starting to get up and starting to, uh, to move towards you with about five of them seeming to be about a step behind the other uh, three uh, who are already um, just starting to rush at you. Uh, anything else you want to do with your turn? I'm going to uh, slip behind the drum. Slip behind the drum. Okay. The drum is uh, well. Uh, you're a halfling, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're 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 short enough that you can kind of break line of sight with them uh, by going behind the drum. Uh, anything else you want to do with your turn? Nope. All right. So that ends that. Uh, next up is Valdis. Valdis, you hear this. Uh, and you can see there's a little bit of activity uh, on the ground below. You see a bunch of the Bullywugs starting to look at each other. They start speaking in a language that you actually don't understand, which is... Shocking. Yeah, remarkable to you. You're <laughs> like, wait a minute. And you almost have to stop yourself from taking a notebook out and starting to write down phonetics and things like that. Um, you notice they're, they're, they're kind of looking around and they look confused. They're not heading towards the stairs to get up to the upper Barbican. Um, but you see a couple of them kind of reaching for weapons and the other ones are like kind of talking to each other. Um, their uh, giant frogs are leaping around a little bit more agitated, you can see. Uh, but it doesn't look like they've done anything as of yet. What do you want to do? Uh, if I just peek in the door, how many would be in a 15-foot cone? Um, just peeking in, you'd only be able to get maybe one or two. If you actually go into the room itself, you could very easily get four or five without too much difficulty. <laughs> It's just not a whole lot of them are right next to where the um, uh, who's you what's it, the thing that drops down. Portcullis. Portcullis. There we go. 
Uh, not a whole lot of them are hanging out near the door, the portcullis where you guys would be coming in from. So you would uh, you would need to go in, probably spend about 15 feet of movement to be able to get four or five in a 15-foot okay. cone. I'll, I'll spend the 15 feet. If it's not my full movement, then I'll do that. No, there's still it's it's not a huge area, um, and again, there's a lot of them. Um, so uh, you have a choice. You can target. Um, uh, five bully, uh, five bullywugs, or two frogs and three bullywugs. Those are the two groups that are closest to you that you get within fifteen feet. Let's do five bullywugs. Okay. Uh, what am I rolling? Uh, dex save. Well, they have super high dex. So, what what's the DC? Uh, it's been a while. Fifteen. And I'm changing the damage type Does a to four work. <laughs> I'm altering the damage type to be uh, thunder since it's wet environment as opposed to fire being more less effective. Uh, three failures, two saves. Uh, that's ten plus nine, nineteen. I can do math. Points of thunder or lightning damage. That was a third and level. And half of nineteen is nine. All right. So you come forward. Is this thunder wave or is this um? Burning hands. Burning hands. To, uh, lightning. All right. So you come forward and you go. So be it, Jedi. And you shoot these light, uh, these bolts of lightning from your uh, outstretched hands. Uh, and three of them, as the bolts of lightning hit them, you see them kind of struggle and, and try to fight against it. And then they just drop to the ground as kind of smoking corpses. The other two brace themselves to get it in, in, uh, against it and don't get the full blast. But you can see uh, these large burn marks where the uh, lightning actually hit them that are starting to ooze this, again, very bright red blood. Um, and they look really, really rough off. Uh, so three are down, two are still up. And then I will move back out of the door so I'm not in there when they all get really, really angry. So you're playing peekaboo. With lightning, but yes. Mm-hmm. So back up to uh, Altier. Uh, uh, all uh, three of the fully awake bullywugs come over to where you're kind of crouching down, and all of them are going to take swings at you. Okay. With... Oh, they get to do this twice. That's kind of cool. <laughs> Yeah. So the first thing they do is they come up and they try and poke you with their spears. So okay. I'm going to roll a spear attacks first. Um, 18. That hit. Uh, 21. Yes. And 12. No. Okay, so two spear attacks. And then after they sit there and they poke you with their spears, they come up and they actually try to bite you. So that is uh, five. Miss. Uh, Fourteen. Miss. And five. Miss. Uh, so the two spears hit me. So you take a grand total of four. Uh, you take a grand total of eight piercing damages. Two of the spears come forward. And as you uh, are kind of deflecting as much as you can and dodging the bites and stuff like that, two of the spears are able to strike you in the arm and in the leg, um, doing minor damage. But uh, the other uh, five bullywugs that are up there are now fully alert uh, and have moved to basically surround you. You are now trapped um, where you are, completely surrounded by bullywugs. Um However, before the people on the bottom floor can react, uh, Anna and Ollie, you guys are going simultaneously. Who wants to go first? 
Go ahead, Anna. Oh, Anna, can you hear us? Jude. We'll come back to Anna. Ollie, <laughs> you're up. Uh, so I'm at the door, right? Uh, yeah, I'm going to say you're all at the door. The doors are massive. Uh, if you guys remember from last week, the doors themselves are these like 20 foot wide, uh, 10 or 15 foot tall uh, doors. And I'm dropping frames. <laughs> Why am I dropping frames? I don't even have steam on. Go away, Creative Cloud. I don't need you updating in the middle of my game. This is my game. You don't say stuff like that to me. Um, sorry, arguing with my computer. Mm -hmm. uh, like you do. So anyway, so these are like 20-foot high doors that are falling off their hinges. Um, okay. So the entire group can kind of get right up close to them without... Uh, too much difficulty of being seen or anything from the people inside. Um, so, yeah, you're right next to the door. What do you want to do? Uh, how far is that group that's inside? That, uh... Uh, there's a couple different groups. The one that uh, Valdis hit mm -hmm. uh, is, again, about 15 feet in. Uh, okay. There's another group that's a group of three Bullywugs and, and two Frogs. That's roughly 15 feet in. All right. Uh, I want to reach into my little bag of fuzzies and I want to throw a fuzzy at that group that's closest and uh, just as a distraction for when it pops. Okay. So uh, you're throwing it towards because they're technically both the same distance. The ones that. Okay. I'll go with the one that Vald just hit. Vald just hit. Okay. <clears throat> so you sit there and you throw it out. And I can't remember what the fuzzy bag does. So you're going to have to remember. Uh, I got it. It's a uh, seven, which is a giant hyena. Giant hyena. So you guys yeah. watch this cute little treble <laughs> just go out and go. <laughs> and uh, it turns into this giant hyena next to these two bloodied, almost dead bullywugs who look less than thrilled to see it. Um, does he get an attack when it shows up? Um, I we never really talked about that. Uh, she said it was an action for me to throw one. Um, uh, we never really verified whether or determined how long, whether or not how long does the creature last for? Until next dawn, or it drops to zero hit points. Yeah, we're gonna say that uh, it doesn't get an attack on its first turn out, right, just cool. because of how long it lasts. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yes, that takes your action. Uh, you get a bonus and. Uh, Technically, uh, since you're only throwing it, um, you're still at the doorway. Okay, uh, that's fine. I'm just going to stay there, and I'll end my turn there. All right. Uh, that brings us to Anna. Can Anna hear us? I can. can you okay. What do you want to do, Anna? Um, I want to turn into a bear, and I want to eat some bullywogs. All right. Uh, again, there's two groups that are two groups. Hmm. Two groups are closest to the door. Uh, do you want to go for the ones that have a hyena next to them, or the ones that haven't been touched yet? Oh no, I I, 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 I want, want the fresh, fresh meat. meat. All right, go for it. You guys see Anna start falling down on all fours, and then start growing bigger and bigger, and hair starts to grow out. Uh, of her back and her, her face elongates and turns into the snout and you hear this <gasps> and you see uh, Enna in bear form just go charging in Enna, uh, do you want to attack a frog or a bullywug? I wish to attack a bullywug Alright uh, Make me an attack roll Okay, so first I'm going to claw it Okay Uh, sorry, I'm going to try to claw it with a seven. Uh, you miss. As you come up and you slash at it, uh, it brings up <laughs> this leather shield and deflects your claws, but you can see it seems a little bit rattled that there's a giant bear coming towards it. Uh, what else you want to do? I would like to, uh, then attempt to bite that arm off. Go for it. Or at least bite the arm. 18. That does hit. Go ahead and roll damage. 
Twelve. All right. So as you uh, sit there and you you run in, you take a slash uh, at him. He blocks with it, and you are just so filled with rage that you sit there and you chop down on his arm, ripping off the arm itself. The bullywug looks down at the stump where his arm used to be and then just falls to the ground, bleeding out this bright red, almost pinkish blood and twitching uh, I would. I would, I would like, like to then use the rest of my turn, turn to just shake the arm and cover all my new friends with blood. They seem slightly intimidated. Uh, is that the end of your turn? That'll be the end of my turn. Lillian, what do you want to do? Uh, um, I'll move it to, um, to my do you perform your right or no no okay so, go ahead and take him and fire. Well, uh, it sits there as it shoots. Were you aiming for a bullywug or a uh, a frog? A bullywug. You sit there and it shoots. It goes tongue, uh, and it lands in the shield uh, of one of the bullywugs. You have another attack. Yeah. Oh, now sorry. with a crossbow. Uh, oh. Because it's very, uh, because of one of its properties, unless you have the crossbow expert feat, um, uh, it doesn't matter how many attacks you have. You can only fire it once per round. Uh, um, can I move it uh, 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 Technically, part of your attack action was drawing and loading the crossbow. Uh, so... Uh, so oh, Alright. Uh, it's time for some frogs. Um, the two frogs that were near Anna and two more frogs make the decision that the giant bear probably is the biggest uh, issue that they're going to have. Uh, they are going to... Really? At 200 and one quarter, they can still swallow you? Cool. Uh, they're going to try biting you. So... Uh, 15... Uh, that does indeed hit. Alright, higher than that. I just lost my d20. Uh, higher than that. Higher than that. All four of them hit. You take a grand total of... Four times four is 12 piercing damage as they all bite onto you and you are grappled by all of them. Um, That's 16. Four times four is 16. Yep, 16, sorry. Math um, is hard. Now, I am a large beast. Yes, it doesn't look like so they're they going to have the ability swallow to swallow you. However, uh, grappling you, not as difficult. Okay. True story. Yeah, you're also thinking that the grapple itself is probably not all that hard to get out of, especially for a bear. Um, however, uh, as long as you're grappled, you are restrained as well. Um, Bullywugs. Um, 
the two that are nearly dead are going to run out because um, they've seen these these people coming from uh, outside. Uh, and as they run out and they see how many people there, they're going to immediately just attack the first person that they see, which is unfortunately Ollie. Wait, uh, are those the ones that were near the hyena? Oh, yeah, they have a hyena. They're going to attack the hyena. Never mind. Okay. They got a hyena to attack. Uh, 18? Uh, yeah, that hits. And six? Nope. Okay, and then their bite attacks are 19. Yes. And a nat 20. Oh, uh, no. All right, so from the spear, uh, they take four damage. Okay. And then from the two bites, they take a grand total of... Eight damage. So twelve total. Uh, yes, twelve total uh, from that as they attack that. Um, there are still one, two, three, four. Looks like five bullywugs still alive. Uh, and again, they they see hyenas and uh, a bear, and uh, two of them are going to go for the hyenas, and the other three are going to go for the bear. Okay. Um, so okay. hyena number one is ignore that roll and a 22 well, that hits. and then for bites a 12 that is the armor class so that okay. hits so that hits and not one two hits so for the one spear attack that made it through, that's four piercing damage, and the one bite attack is three bludgeoning damage okay. uh, from those. And then uh, the other three are going to take attacks at the giant bear, uh, who, because they are restrained, uh, has uh, they have advantage on these attacks. Uh, 19. That's it. Okay. Fourteen. That hits. Okay. Uh, Ten. That does not. Okay, so for the spear attacks, that is a grand total of eight piercing damage. And then for the bite attacks... That's one hit. That's two hits. Three hits uh, for a grand total of nine bludgeoning damage as Ooh. these bullywugs come forward Ooh. and they're wielding their spears and they stab into this giant bear. And then after they do that, they get a big mouth for a fur as they try to bite it as well. Uh, that ends their turn, goes back to the top. Altier, you are surrounded by Bullywugs. Yes. So They seem I, less than pleased that you broke their drum. I drop my dagger, and I'm going to stab one in front of me with my short sword. Okay. Uh, 14? Uh, just barely misses. As you sit there and thrust it forward he deflects it with his leather shield bonus action dodge <laughs> okay yeah you have two attacks no i don't oh no you don't no. never mind i forgot uh cool so you're up there on your own with a bunch of bullywugs uh however valdis is up first so i could do the same thing again but then and then the hyena would get hit uh, well, technically, the hyena uh, is in a different group than okay. Anna. So Anna has, what, three bullywugs and four frogs. four frogs. And uh, the hyena has... Four frogs. Right? Uh, no, uh, four bullywugs. Yeah. Yeah. So more on Anna. Yes. 
Well, and it's uh, bigger. Would I be able to hit majority of them or all the ones on Anna with a 15 foot cone? Uh, if you hit Anna, you could hit all of them. My next question, Anna, what is your highest saving throw stat? Uh, I'm going to say strength. If you're a bear. Yeah. Or or Uh, wisdom might be it. Because you get to keep your druid wisdom stat. Because I will do another third level burning hands. Except you're hitting the mind. I like it. <laughs> Except I'm going to alter it to do... Uh, I'm going to alt- change the saving throw to wisdom, and I want it to be like they just see a bunch of skulls just emerging from my hands and attacking them, as, like eating their eye sockets, like just an illusionary display. Okay. Okay. Um, Is this like a damage? Bullywugs have super awesome wisdom scores. Oh, can I change the damage type as well? Uh, I'm going to say uh, we're going to call this psychic damage just because of what you're doing. Okay. So, so Anna, the DC is 15. And I hope you roll high because, holy crap. Mm-hmm. All right, out of, what is it, four and three out of seven, two saved. Okay, the total damage is 18. Ow. So we're going to say one frog and one... Bullywug. Bullywug saved. That's one, two, And then how'd you do? 23. Okay, so yeah, you take half. And that takes nine. So where once there was a beautiful, yet somehow bloodied bear, uh, there is now a less beautiful, but still somewhat bloody Anna. It wasn't fire. It was just psychic. It was all in the mind. All right. So you sit there and you you send forth these illusory skulls and you see them uh, start freaking out. You see three of the frogs just... Uh, their hearts explode from the fear and they just drop down dead. Uh, the fourth one uh, is sitting there uh, attacking and, 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 and trying to eat these skulls that don't exist, doing more damage to itself than anything else. Um, you watch as two of the uh, gar, uh, or two of the bullywugs themselves sit there just grabbing their heads as these skulls look to be eating them alive and they fall down dead. And the third one sits there and trying to stop the skulls uh, from hurting him, sits there and just starts scratching his skin off and makes these massive deep lacerations all over his skin and all over his face, making him bleed out rather profusely, uh, but still be conscious. Um, do, do, do. That means that, uh, anything else you want to do with your turn, Valdis? Now that did take, uh, 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 that did take, uh, most of your movement to get to a spot where you could hit all of them. So you only have about 10 feet of movement left. You would not be able to get behind how, the door again. How many are, uh, still alive on the floor? Uh, there's one frog and one bullywug on Anna, and then there are three bullywugs on the hyena. All right, then I'll stay on this floor and tell someone to go upstairs and help Altier so he's not alone. Okay. Uh, that ends your turn. We're going to go to... Anna and Ollie. Uh, Ollie, you went first last time, so we'll go Ollie first. Uh, use the hyena to attack one of the frogs. Go for it. Uh, that's. What is this? Plus five, so that's a 23. Oh, it's dead. The hyena sits there, rips it into tiny little pieces. Does he get multi uh, attack? No, it does say that when uh, you reduce a creature to zero hit points, uh, that hyena can take its bonus action move up to half its speed, but that's 
and and make a make a bite attack. Okay. So, so it can bite moves another. around. Yeah, so it really moves quickly. Again. And then makes right. another bite attack. Uh it's a twenty four. Uh another hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Okay. Oh uh that's max, so it's uh fifteen. Yeah, that's another dead bullywog. Uh, there was one bullywog that hadn't been touched yet, and he watched uh, his friend just get completely shredded by this hyena. The hyena looks at him, just comes barreling towards him, da- um, jumps down at him. He brings his shield up to protect himself, and the hyena just bats it away and starts eviscerating him, pulling out his inner organs and things like that and chewing on them as the creature just sits there dead. Uh, anything else you want to do with your turn? Uh, no, that's good. All right. It uh, only takes your bonus action to command the creature. Oh. Yeah, I put that in. So do you want to do something cool? Okay. Um, how far am I away from uh, Altier right now? Uh, Altier? Uh, you would have to run across. Uh, you'd basically need to double move to get upstairs. Uh, uh, like I wanted to do a healing word towards him. Uh, he has to be within line of sight, uh, and you can't see him. Oh, okay. I thought there was like a, like a it was like a uh, area you could see over. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a there's a roof in between you and him. I see. Okay. Um, I guess I'll just do a sacred flame on the closest uh, frog then. What's the DC? Stop. Uh, Fifteen. Uh, make it. Oh, fine. Unless what's what's the spell? Uh, what's the spell save? Dex. Yeah, he makes it. Then. Dex. Yeah. Okay. There's a guy. They have a couple stats that are negative. He rolled a fifteen on the dice, so if it was ah. a different stat, he'd be dead. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, that ends uh, Ollie's turn. Anna, you uh, do not have nearly as many friends as you used to. I am sad. In fact, um, it looks like you I only assume... have one frog and one bullywug. You are still is restrained, still... unfortunately. Is that frog still biting me? Yes, it is. Does it have... Uh, how is it biting me? Uh, with its mouth? Sorry, what part of me is it biting? Uh, let's say your paw. Um, I, I'm no longer a bear. I okay. had to revert back to my normal self. So, right hand? Uh, I'm, I'm going to say uh, you're still going to be restrained <coughs> because as you get smaller, you basically drag <laughs> it with you. Um, so, it's right. still... Uh, but yeah, sure. Let's say it's grabbing. It's it's large enough that it would have most of your arm in its mouth. Uh, I would like to uh, use a bonus action to catch Flame Blade. Okay. Uh, so you guys watch and... as Enna sits there and concentrates, and you see uh, this burst of flame shoot forward from her hands, and she grabs onto it, and it forms itself into a a scimitar of flame. And then I will attack the frog. Uh, you're going to have to make an attack roll for that. 14. Uh, uh, I think on a frog that actually hits. Hold on. Let me look. Oh, yeah. They have super high AC. Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll damage. I'm thinking you're going to have frog lights for dinner. 15. Uh, it does not exist anymore. Uh, so as you sit there, uh, it, um, before, uh, you do technically have disadvantage because you're restrained. Uh, 11? 11 still hits. So, uh, yeah, frogs don't have super high AC. Uh, so you sit there and you shear the frog off in half, uh, cauterizing the wounds immediately and watching it fall dead to the floor. Uh, there's one bullywug ne- left near you uh, that looks less than thrilled that the bear has now turned into a girl wielding 
uh, a fire sword. I just turn to him and do one of those kung fu stances and uh, give the come here signal. Okay. Uh, oh, these guys should have gone before. Uh, you're going to get a lot of attacks against you, uh, Altier. At disadvantage. Unfortunately, that means... Uh, all right, so what I'm going to do is uh, to make things run faster here, uh, I am going to just roll two attacks, and that's going to count for all... There's a grand total of eight attacks coming against you. At disadvantage. <laughs> um, or technically, um, 16 attacks uh, yeah. coming against you. You have eight spear attacks, eight bite attacks. We're just going to teach. This is all the spear attacks. At disadvantage. Well, that's a four. Yeah. And that's a three. That's impressive. So the spear attacks all mess. That's a seven, a ten. Does a ten hit? No. All right, so there's no way this is going to hit. I got a seven again. That's impressive. So they sit there, uh, and just to kind of give you this, you realize that you are not in a good position. You are surrounded by Bullywugs. They're all trying to attack you. Um, and so you go into a battle trance and start seeing sharp objects start f uh, flinging towards you, and you immediately start blocking and and going very much um what's the keanu reeves movie is it john wick the matrix the one where he does all the gu real cool gun fights the matrix That's john wick, john wick matrix. okay i'm not talking about the matrix you are you are not matrix level martial arts yet yeah i know kung fu <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you see him just uh, coming towards you and you are you're blocking and redirecting and, and, and all these things and then they start trying to bite at you and you're smacking them away and things like that and at the end of that you are exhausted but you are unhurt and they seem to be a little bit uh, worried that out of 18 attacks not a single one touched you um that ends their turn. Lillian. Uh, so. On the ground floor, there is a grand total of two Bullywugs. They are both near death. Uh, I'll go. I'll draw my sword. And as I'm moving forward, I do it and I quote it was. Mm-hmm. I will ignite my... Okay. Alright, go ahead and make your attack roll. You guys watch as Lillian comes forward. She starts drawing her sword as she does. Uh, she nicks her hand and you see the blood itself burst into... It's fire, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Burst into flame and as this flaming sword comes swinging towards the creature... What'd you get? 22. It's dead. So you come forward and you just cleave the head clean off, completely cauterizing the wound. Um, I believe you still have another attack if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's say it's close enough for you to, to move and, and get the other one. Uh, again, you come forward and shink another one and just bites the dust. There's no one left on the bottom floor. Uh, of this uh, area. Um, that means all those guys are dead. That brings us back up to Alti Altier. You have a bunch of friends up here. Yes. Yeah, that seems slightly, turn. slightly worried that uh, they didn't. Uh... Now me. you did. Uh, you did burn a key point to use. I uh, did. Okay. Patient right. defense, yeah. So, yeah, they, uh, they do not look particularly pleased that they haven't touched you. Um, but there's nine of them there, and they're ready to fight. So what do you want to do? 20, 21 to hit with my short sword on one of them. Uh, definitely hit roll damage. Uh, ooh, that's max. 11 piercing. 
All right. So you sit there and uh, you kind of spin the sword around and thrust it forward and you pierce one of their hearts, bringing back and you watch it just drop and a pool of blood form around it. And again, I'll burn a key point for patient defense. Okay, and then you bring the sword back uh, back into uh, a wushu stance with it held high above your head, your hands, uh, your fingers pointing out at them, prepared for another assault. Um, but before they get to do that, Valdis, you are up. How far away is Altier from where I am? Uh, it's uh, Again, it's going to take you a double move to get upstairs. I'm inside the building right now because I had to go in next to Enna to do that mm-hmm. last round. Uh, I'm still going to say it's going to it's going to take you a, a a double move to get upstairs because stairs are going to be difficult terrain and uh, stuff like that. So even being uh, inside the building, um, getting upstairs is going to be a double move. Okay. Uh, before I do the double move, I'll just do my normal move, see how far I get, and if I can even see any from the bottom of the stairs. But if not, then I'll just. Wait Make there. me a perception check. Why do I get these when it's not attacks? Uh, natural 20, so 23. All right. So uh, you get to the stairs. You start climbing up. Um, uh, there isn't... Uh, like, the stairs basically just... Uh, uh, on the uh, upper barbicade are basically just a hole um, that you come up into. And so you come towards uh, the top of the the hole, and you're able to see a couple of them. Okay. I will just firebolt one of them so that they know someone's there. Okay. Besides old here. Now they are going to have partial cover, uh, (coughs) basically half cover Um, because of the floor. Plus seven is a 19. 1919 is still enough to hit them. Okay. Stop going under my headset. Uh, 7 plus 4, 11. I can do math tonight. All right. So you sit there, and as you come up, you see Altier is surrounded, and he's in this unique stance. And so you sit there, and you concentrate. What's your focus again? Uh, my wand. Wand. So you sit there, and you concentrate, and you point your wand out, and this bolt of flame comes over uh, and smacks one in the back, leaving this large scorch mark, and the creature itself just falls down dead. And you see a couple of them turn and look at you. I just wave. Uh, okay, that's the end of Valdis' turn. Uh, they're actually up next. Um, we're going to have, how many do I have left? One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, four are going to stay on you. Uh, and again, I'm going to do the same thing before because it's just faster. These are all the spear attacks. That's in that one. Okay. Uh, and then these are all the bite attacks. That actually might hit if I don't roll super bad. Uh, 16. My armor class is 17. All right. So again, you sit there and you're bringing your short sword down and you're blocking with everything with kicks and punches and everything you can possibly do. Uh, this has become exhausting. You are, um, feeling yourself drawing upon your inner strength to keep yourself, uh, from, uh, slipping or anything. And you can feel that inner strength being kind of drained by this attack, uh, but you're still upright, and they are still not attacking, uh, not making it through your, your impenetrable defense. Uh, the other two are going to come over. As, as they run away from me, I stab at one. Okay. Uh, 20 to hit. That's a hit. Roll damage. 10. 10. Wow. So the other, uh, the other two are going to try and take attacks at Valdis. Uh, the first one goes to the spear, gets a 16. That hits. Okay, second one with the spear is going to do a 6. Surprisingly hit. No, it doesn't. Uh, and then two bite attacks for a 12. Nope. And a nat 20. 
Yeah. So the spear hits you for four damage. Uh, the bite hits you for five damage. Uh, and the other two attacks miss. Uh, and you are now uh, standing next to these. Is there, they basically have the high ground as they're standing up there and you're on the stairs partial way, part of the way down. Uh, that brings us to Ollie. What do you want to do? Uh, I myself am going to go ahead and double dash to go for the stairwell. Because there are two literally right at this stairwell now, if you make a single move, you could attack one of the ones uh, on okay. the stairwell, or you can double dash and make it all the way over to Altier. Uh, I also wanted to set up the hyena as well to attack one of the bully wall or the yeah. Was it the bully walls on the stairwell? You said. Uh, it's all Bullywugs upstairs. Okay. Uh, I'll send the hyena, I guess, one, and I'll attack the uh, the other one as well. Uh, okay. Um, so for the hyena, that's a 23. Misses. Yeah, roll down. Uh, it's dead. Don't even worry about it. Okay. So the hyena gets the second attack now. <laughs> Yeah, but I wanted to attack. I want to go ahead and send the hyena. Pat, uh, I'll attack the other bullywug, and the hyena can go by upstairs to help out Altier. Okay, how far can the hyena go? Uh, half its speed, which is fifty foot movement, so twenty five feet. Oh yeah, easily can get there. I didn't realize hyenas are so fast. Yeah. So uh, Altier, as you're standing there, uh, you suddenly hear the sound of paw prints, and you think. Uh, Enna is coming towards you uh, in her bear form, and you are surprised to see a hyena coming towards you covered in blood, uh, and it goes to rip at the necks of one of the bullywugs attacking you. Uh, that plus five, that's a math 14? Uh, 14 misses. So as it comes up, uh, it dives onto one of them, and it, and it brings its shield up at just the right time and blocks the uh, uh, blocks the bite and takes no damage from it. Um, okay. You still have things you can do, though. Uh, if I do a Sacred Flame on that bully log downstairs, is that going to hurt Valtus? No, Sacred Flame is a single target. Okay, I just want, I just want to double check. I yep. want to do that against that one. What's your spell save, DC? That doesn't matter. It's a one. It's Roll damage. 15. Okay. <laughs> Two D6. Uh, no, it's 2d8. Um, oh, okay. It's 13. Uh, so as you sit there, you clasp your holy symbol um, and you call down uh, a smiting flame uh, from your... Which deity do you serve again? Uh, Eldath. Eldath. Oh, yes. So you see this green flame. Green flame! Come down and just immolate... Uh, this uh, bullywug next to Valdis, and it just hits the ground dead. All right, and that's all my movement, right? Uh, yeah, that's everything. All right, cool. Uh, Anna, you're up. Or not, Anna? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, cool. Anna, you're up. Um, are, are there any more bullywugs left? Not on this floor. Uh, you hear battle from okay. upstairs. Uh, but you get the um, idea that in order for you to get up those stairs, you are going to have to run over people. Because they've kind of blocked no off the stairway. I. Uh, oh, you're not I, in bear I, form. I, I, Never mind. You can make it. I'm not in bear form yet. Yeah. So I'm going to run up the stairs with my flame sword and, and just uh, uh, kind of angrily growl at Lillian saying, That one was mine. <laughs> okay. Um, so you get I, to kind I, of the, the of base of the stairs, and that takes your full movement. Uh, and you can see a bunch of bullywugs surrounding Altier and a hyena. Uh, but to get to him, you'd have to uh, so, use double so, movement. So in order to get, to get within range of anybody, I have to go double my movement? Yes, you would. Then I will go double my movement. All right, so you come forward with your flame blade in your hand, rushing towards them. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Lillian, you're up. Uh, I am 
I get I bet my way up. Okay. You gonna and double move? And I, and I, <laughs> Little good nature. Anna starts practicing how to draw her name using the flaming scimitar. Um, that brings us back to the top of the order. Altier, you now have a bunch of friends, a uh, bunch of actual friends near you, along with the one, two, three, four remaining bullywugs in front of you. I'm assuming the bullywug that got attacked by the hyena is the most freaked out, so I'm going to stab at him with the short sword. Go for it. Uh, 19 to hit. 19 definitely hits. I have an ally, so I get sneak attack finally. Yes, you do. <laughs> 15 piercing. All right. So you sit there, and because the creature uh, is so focused on this hyena, you kind of go in and you get right uh, up and uh, get its kidneys and stomach and everything. And as you pull it out, you see the creature's eyes roll back into its head and fall down as it's basically eviscerated. And the hyena just starts uh, chowing down uh, because it has a new source of food in front of it. Uh, Anything else you want to do with your turn? I'm going to spin and backfist another one. Go for it. Make an attack roll. Um, I don't think that'll... Maybe. 15? 15 does hit. Just barely. Yes. D4. 8. Bludgeoning. All right. So as you uh, sit there and you, you pull your blade out, you spin around with a back fist and smack one in the temple. You see its uh, eyes are kind of swimming and it's, it's moving around. You see blood start dripping from its nose and ears. You've obviously burst some capillaries uh, in its head. Um, and so it's, it's, it's weaving around a little bit, but it's still upright. Anything else you want to do with your turn? Nope. I have friends now. <laughs> Valdes, you can see the bad guys. There's none on me right now, currently. Cause... There's none on you? No. Well, okay. technically, there is some on you. It's not alive. <laughs> but a hyena ripped one to shreds right next to you. Like, so, press the digitation the will be useful. <laughs> I'll go the rest of the way up the stairs. and okay. How many more are left? Uh, there's a grand total of one, two, three left, one of which looks very, very badly hurt. Uh, is there a way I could position Burning Hands to not hit Altier? Sure. Okay. I'll just do it at level one. Okay. Uh, fail, fail, fail. Uh, 11 points of fire. That is, they had 11 hit points. <laughs> so uh, you come up and you and you incinerate the rest of them. Uh, you guys are now starting to feel almost this heartbeat of magic. It's obviously coming from somewhere within the castle. Um, that, again, is about 100 foot. Um a uh, 100 feet away from you guys. Um, you can see now that the upper bar, uh, barbiturate, bar, bar, barbicade, there we go, barbiturate, yeah. Um, the upper barbicade was actually made um, so that uh, if anyone was to make it through the lower one um, and they were to run along this 100-foot um, hallway, there's no roof to it. So you could just rain down arrows and rocks and hot oil and whatever you wanted at anyone trying to go along this path uh, in an attempt to kill them before they could actually make it to the castle proper. Um, this castle itself, remarkably well constructed as far as a defensive standpoint. Um, but with nobody up here, there's really nothing to fear now. You just see me all sweaty. Probably one of the most exhausting things I've ever done in my life, but we need to keep moving. It was super badass. I turned to Anna and be like, did any of those have your name on it? 
Nice. Did the 12 I killed downstairs have your name on it? I'm sorry. Is this, is this a numbers game? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll start it. Yeah, I'm not going first, but I'll go. Uh, yeah, I'll start, start charging down the stairs. I'll start heading. Towards, uh, Especially since I can just kind of leap off of the barbicade. <laughs> yeah, if you want to do that, you are totally fine with that. Yeah. Theoretically, uh, do you have the... I have, I have the slow fall. Okay, so it's your monk level... Uh, plus your dex mod plus a d10. Ten, d10. So also cat's gray stuff, which mm -hmm. you don't yeah. Have. Oh, then you're you're perfectly fine. You just jump down. The rest of you guys, you can jump down if you want. <laughs> I'm not wasting feather fall. <laughs> I mean, go uh, ahead. I, I'll, I promise. I'll 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 tell you. I was on the on the ground floor. Uh, technically, uh, you're at the. Ba uh, top of the base of the stairs on the second floor, so you're uh, all fired because you you had to be I'll able to see these guys. So you're, you know, I'll stop back downstairs. All right. So the rest of you guys, you start heading towards uh, the castle proper. You notice that there is there a door? There's a doorway. It doesn't say there's a door. So there is no door. We're gonna say there is no door. Uh, okay, so as you, uh, you guys being sneaky, you guys running in head, head first. Uh, I have sneaky. disadvantage on stealth, so good luck, everybody. You and me both. <laughs> so it we'll probably hang in the back if we're going sneaky. Quick, quick, like a bunny. Do, do. Do, do. do you guys want to sneak or do you want to go? All right, rushing in. He's rushing. She's rushing in. Let's All, right. Go. All right. So you guys, All right. as you round the corner, uh, you run smack into. Three bullywugs. And four lizardmen. You see the lizardmen. Uh, this whole area is kind of packed down earth. Uh, and you can see some like training dummies uh, on the east side uh, and it looks like the lizard men are sitting there kind of practicing on the trainer uh, training dubbies the uh, bullywugs are just kind of loafing around some of them uh, you can hear shouting in this really broken form of common uh, things like that was a bad hit your footing's imprecise blah 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 oh my youngest tadpole could hit better than that blah 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 and as you guys come around they just kind of look at you and perplexed especially at the young elven half elven what are you anna uh elf, elf. Wood elf. Wood elf. at the uh young wood elven woman carrying this the flaming blade uh, and they're like oh, um uh, I, I i turn towards lillian and i'm just like flash the lizard symbol thing Um, yeah, I'll fly the symbol. All right, so they see you holding this symbol, and they're kind of looking at you, expecting something. That was for the lizard, then. The bullywugs can get yeah, out. The bullywugs <laughs> don't seem to give a shit. But the lizard men are looking at you expectantly. Uh, stand down. Don't mind what we do, <laughs> and I, I kind of look at the guys. I'm just like, we're doing this, you know, for the bully ones. I'll say, uh, we are. We've already cleared out. We've, we're starting a, we're starting a riot, and we're on the lizard bin side. We're already helping them kill the bully walks outside, and hopefully get a reaction out of the lizard bin. Okay, go ahead and roll me a uh, persuasion check with with advantage. I'm assuming you're saying this in Draconic? Yes. Okay. Uh, so two 19s, but minus two, so 17. That's more than enough. You see them go, ha! And I'm kind uh, of motion to the blood I have on my robes. 
or chainmail. And uh, it looks like you're not going to have to deal with the lizardmen, but they still are not 100% on the idea of uh, attacking the Bullywugs. Uh, but there's only three of them. So um, we're going to keep an issue from before. Altier, you're the first uh, You're the first that's able to react. Yeah, I'm not even going to wait for sneak attack. I'm just going to attack one. Okay. Uh, 24 to hit. Definitely hit. Roll damage. D6. Uh, eight. All right. It's looking really, really rough, but it's still up Time. right. Time to boop its snoot with a foot. <laughs> okay, go for it. Uh, that's a 23 to hit. Another hit. Go ahead and roll damage. That's a d6. Um, d4. Six. Legendary. All right. So as you come forward, you slash it with your short sword uh, and, and graze it uh, and start it bleeding. And then you come around with a, a back hook kick. And you, again, hear that snapping sensation uh, as the neck... Uh, as the head turns much further than it should, and the creature falls down dead. Uh, Valdis, you are up next. I'm going to fire both a different one. Go of for the, it. Uh, not the lizard people. Uh, 16 to hit? 16 is a hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Oh, wow. That, I was like zero, but that's a 10, so that's 20. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I rolled zero. How's that possible? <laughs> Wait a minute. I rolled zero damage? I'm not supposed I to be able to so do that. I've got like four hours and three days. Uh, it doesn't exist anymore. It's a pile of ash. Uh, anything else you want to do with your turn? No. <laughs> uh, we're going to go to Ollie. There's one uh, Bullywug left. He's not looking... Incredibly helpful. Uh, I'll hit him with my mace because I haven't done that in a long time. Okay, so you run forward. All the holy power within you being focused into your mace. Go ahead, smack him. Uh, that's a twenty-two. That misses, unfortunately. You rolled too high. Oh. Um, roll damage. Okay. You're aiming for eleven. Uh, that's nine. Nine, okay. So you sit there and you smack it, uh, and you hit it pretty hard. You could hear bones crunching as you destroy the cartilage in its jaw. Um, but it's still upright. Anything else you want to do with your turn? You still have a uh, hungry, yes. hungry hyena. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you have your hyena. I'll follow the hyena over and let him finish off. Okay. Uh, that's an 18 for the hyena. Uh, it's definitely a hit. It has two hit points. It's dead. Yeah. Uh, so the lizard men come over and they speak to Valdis because it seems like Valdis is the only one that understands them. They're speaking Draconic. Um, and so they go, ah, compatriots. Ah, and somewhere that the DM doesn't remember. <laughs> uh, hold, please. do 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 so they basically uh, point to three different rooms where the lizard folk normally kind of congregate and uh they mention those are where the uh um our remaining men are and they also point to um where you would assume looking at the building itself uh they point to where uh stables would be uh and uh they they speak a very broken form of draconic um, so despite the fact that you're fluent in it, um, there's still a little bit that's lost in translation. Um, and uh, so they talk about pets um, in the stables. Um, you're not 100% sure. Or roll a, uh, roll a, a history check. 
Uh, 25. You get the idea that they're probably ref- referencing giant lizards, seen as lizard men uh, t- train giant lizards to kind of be like attack dog type things. Um, so they mentioned that in the stables that they have giant lizards in there, that there's probably about uh, two dozen more lizard men throughout the thing. They will go and kind of rally uh, the lizard men, um, but that they dare not go up against the... Uh, uh, the dragon kneelers, uh, because they are far, far too powerful for the lizard men themselves. Um, but they do tell you where all the bullywugs are, um, so that you can either avoid them or go murder them while they, because there's some of them in the barracks, there's some of them in uh, another area that I can't remember. Where. I'll tell the uh, lizard folk that. We're going to deal with the dragon kneelers if they want to help us to deal with the, the polywogs or whatever they're called. The polywogs. They're, uh, they're actually good with that. And whatever treasure we find, we don't find that they seem to snatch onto, they can keep. I don't care. Okay. They do mention uh, to the in the, the area that you were in there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven doors that lead out of there. Um, the one in the northwest is uh, a doorway, not a door, but it basically leads. You see like a central tower, uh and uh, the doorway leads to the other side of the tower. Um, and they mention that that's where uh, some of the dragon kneelers are. Um, and then they also mention that the first door on your left in the southwest corner, um, the uh, dragon kneelers hold that area in very high esteem. It's very important to them. Um, but there's currently not any in there. Let me, before I say that 100%, let me check. Yes, so they, they mention, um, uh, they mention it's very important, uh, but again, because of the uh, the broken uh, draconic, it's it's kind of difficult. They keep describing it with a very specific name. You don't quite understand what the name is. It doesn't it doesn't quite translate well. Um, so, so do you guys want to go northwest or southwest? Important room or room where we know they actually are. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, I hear you. Okay. We'll go check out the important room first, the southwest. Right. Yeah. So as you guys go in, you open up the door, and um, you are immediately kind of overwhelmed uh, with the briefest sense of fear as you look into the toothy maw of a five-headed dragon staring back at you. Um and as you kind of uh, settle yourself, you realize that you have wandered into an altar to Tiamat. Um, the uh, dragon deity of chromatic dragons, they have created an altar to Tiamat. You can see that each uh, one of the heads is actually uh, carved and colored to be the correct color. You have a red head, a blue head, a green head, a white head, and a black head. And this whole room looks like uh it it's a chapel and it has been dedicated to various deities depending on who is um ruled the uh the castle but um right now it is dedicated to Tiamat um what do you guys want to do do you want to hurry the other way yeah, I don't think there's nothing we can do I, aside uh, from desecrating a religious nice statue. <laughs> but <laughs> what? And, and I, 
the I'm taking my flame sword and waving. Can you not hear me? And trying to I can hear you. <laughs> so you try you try to burn the statue? No, 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 no. Can yes. you hear me, Jody? Uh yes, I'm uh uh Anna is saying something right now. Oh, sorry. Oh, I can't hear Anna, sorry. Yes, sorry, I'm I'm attempting to burn the statue. Uh okay. Make me make me an investigation check. Six. Uh, yeah, as you sit there, the statue itself is made out of, uh, stone, so you can hack off little bits Mm -hmm. and pieces, uh, but it doesn't look like, uh, it's doing a whole lot of, uh, uh, damage to it. You do notice as you hit it, um, you're not 100% sure, but it doesn't, it doesn't feel quite solid. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm out of ideas. Do you want me to try to hit it, Emma? Uh, me? If you wanted to uh, look around, maybe figure out why it doesn't feel exactly solid. Yeah, I'll I'll look around. Sure. Need an investigation check. Uh... Uh, the only one that's not plus 10 in intelligence, uh, that's going to be a 17. All right, so as you're sitting there looking at it, you see some of the, the bits that were hacked off. One of the uh, places where Enna uh, hacked off some uh, was a corner, uh, one of the um, horns of the black dragon. Uh, and as you look at it, you notice um, just the slightest uh, hole in the horn itself as if if, uh, the inside of the black dragon head is hollow. And after feeling out uh, a little bit, you feel a satisfying uh, and a drawer uh, pops open underneath the uh, dragon's head. And inside it, you see uh, a dagger sitting there. The dagger itself uh, has uh, uh, a serpentine wrapped handle and the blade itself has this wicked curve to it uh and as you uh examine it uh you notice it is a dagger of venom let's be like hey uh altier how much do you love me right now a lot i'll just hand him the dagger unless it's cursed then i'm never getting rid of it Uh, give me a second <laughs> yep all right so dagger of venom uh you have it uh i don't have the stats for the dagger of venom in front of me right now it's in the dmg if i remember correctly once per day you can push a button on it and Venom uh, covers the blade. Yeah, it's a DC 15 Constitution save, I believe. Yeah. I'm totally and in the wrong place. Glamour studded leather. It's a plus one dagger as an action. I coat it with poison. They make a con save. If they fail, they're poisoned and they take 2d10 poison damage. Can't be used that way until the next dawn. Okay, cool. And doesn't require attunement. So, that's yours. Yes. All right. So, uh, where do you guys want to go now? The other way, of all west. Yeah. I literally, looking through all my books, I'm like, oh, you know what would be really smart? Let's put Horde of the Dragon Queen at the absolute bottom of a pile of books. All right. As you guys go around. Uh, you run into three guard drakes. That's an ambush drake. That's different. Guard drake starts with G. E, F, G. There we go. Uh, so yeah, you run in, you see these big, um, four-legged dragon-like 
uh, creatures, but they don't have any wings. Um, and uh, they look rough. You've uh, uh, you've tangled with them before. They're they're relatively dangerous, uh, and they look to be ready to fight. Uh, I'm going to keep the same. Do you guys want to uh, redo initiative? Seeing as it's been a little bit since you've actually fought. Sure. Yeah, sure. Okay, go ahead and everybody roll initiative for me. I've got to... He thinks diplom- diplomacy will not work on this. <coughs> diplomacy, yeah. Guard Drake's total, like, diplomatic. Like, I was like, I maybe I could speak with animals. Oh, wait. I speak draconic. I don't need that. But I'm like, no, they're guard drakes. They won't care. Uh, Altier, what you got? 22. All right. Anna, what you got? 13. Valdis, what you got? 14. Ollie, what you got? 8. Ludane, what you got? 4. Wow, awesome. Uh, Altier, <laughs> you're up first again. You see these three guard drakes, they all start rushing towards uh, the party itself. What are you going to do? I'm going to drop back about 10 feet and uh, ready my short bow, and I'm going to fire when somebody gets within melee of one of them. Once, Once one of your allies? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, cool. Um, that brings us to Valdis. I will just fire bolt one. Okay. Uh, it's 22 to hit. Uh, that definitely hits. Roll damage. Uh, 13 fire. All right. So as you sit there and you you cast your bolt of fire at it, uh, it sits there and it singes. Da, 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 da. Nope. Uh, it singes uh, the skin a little bit, but uh, the guard drake uh, seems barely affected by it and is still rushing towards you guys. It's like uh, about 10 feet, 10 feet back, so I'm not at the front. Okay. Uh, Anna, you're up next. Uh, I go charging at it. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, why not? Um, and we'll use my flame blade to attack. Uh, uh, before that happens, uh, Altier, Anna gets within range of uh, yeah. the closest one. Uh, 18 to hit. 18 does hit. Roll damage. Uh, 12 piercing. <clears throat> uh, was that with sneak attack? Yes. All right. Uh, so as the... Uh, Arrow pierces it. You can see a little bit of blood starting to drizzle down. Uh, a little bit of blood starting to ooze from the scorch mark from the fire bolt. Uh, it's looking a little more rough, but still raring to grow. Uh, Anna, you're up. Uh, 26 to hit. That misses. Uh, roll damage. 16. All right, so you sit there, and as you come up, you take a big slash at it, and you cut off a chunk of uh, uh, its meat as you cauterize it. You can see blood still oozing from the cauterized wounds. It's crying out in pain, but it's still upright, and it's still looking to attack you. Anything else you want to do with your time? Uh, nope. uh, since you are the closest, you are going to get all three of these guys. Yes! Oh, no. New teammates. Uh, first one... Uh, 23. That misses. And 14. That actually misses. That actually misses, okay. So you get missed by the tail. So you take 7 piercing damage as uh, one of them comes up uh, and bites onto you. Uh, Second one comes up, tries to bite you with a nat 20, and then swings its tail at you with a nat 1. Third one, I'll do damage all at the same time for the rest of them. Uh, is a 16. That hits. Okay, and then the tail is an 11. 
That does not hit. All right, so you take 11 damage from the bite and then another seven damage from the third bite. Uh, so a total of 18 damage on top of what you already took. Uh, you know that cartoon with the dog in the fire? Mm-hmm. This is fine. This is fine. <laughs> Anna's looking pretty rough out there, but Ollie is up next. What do you want to do? Ollie, can you hear me? I'm going to refresh real quick because Roll20 is working super, super well. It looks to me that I have lost Ollie completely. Ollie doesn't love me. Oliver? Oliver? No. Uh, so we'll wait for, uh, uh, we'll insert Ollie when he comes back. Lillian, you're up next. And and he's looking rough. There's three guard drakes that are all attacking Anna right now. One of which looks real bad off. Okay. Go ahead and make an attack roll. <laughs> Definitely a hit roll damage. So as you come over, you sit there and slice off and go straight through the head uh, with it just going bloom, 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 flopping on the floor. Uh, Okay, hold please. Messages are fun. There are people outside my house singing, and they're not okay. Christmas carolers. No oh boy. <laughs> so Ali looks completely lost in thought as uh, he uh, starts to stare at his arm. Uh, okay, so we're going to go back here, we're going to go back here, we're going to go back here, uh, so one of them's gone, uh, Ollie seems preoccupied, uh, so we go back up to the top, Altier, there are two left. I'm going to try out my new dagger. <laughs> go for it. So, that's a... They're not even singing the fight song, right? So uh, that plus nine now, so that's eighteen. Uh, definitely a hit roll damage. Remember the plus one applies the damage as well. Yep. So that's plus six. So that's nine piercing. Oh wait, plus a d six. So this is stick attack. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's now thirteen piercing. All right, so you come up. You bring the blade up and you stab it into the creature. The creature has incredibly thick skin. So um, even as you stab into it, uh, it cries out in pain, but still seems to be fairly, uh, fairly unaffected by it. Other than having a little bit of a gash in it, the gash really isn't even bleeding that much right now. Uh, What else are you going to do? Give it a really hard kick. (laughs) Go for it. Uh... I don't think that'll hit 11. 11 misses. So you, as you uh, impact it with your uh, roundhouse kick, you realize how thick the skin really is because it completely absorbs the impact itself and just 
nothing happens to the creature at all. Uh, anything else you want to do with your turn? Nope. Uh, that brings us back to Valdis. I will do a level two healing word on Enna before I do anything else. Okay. Uh, okay. That plus three. Uh, that's one off max. Why can't I do ten? Enna, you um, have ten more hit points than you had previously. So uh, you guys watch as Valdis sits there and just starts speaking uh, into uh, his holy symbol. Uh, and you see the words themselves just kind of traveled forward. And Anna, you see some of your wounds start to close on themselves. And then I will firebolt the one Altier previously attacked. Go for it. Try rolling zero again. <laughs> well, it's a hit. It's a 20, not natural. Okay, definitely a hit roll damage. Uh, 12 points of fire. No zeros, unfortunately. All right. So, again, as you hit there and you, you create this scorch mark, it starts to ooze a little bit more. The cut that Altier made starts to ooze bloods a little bit more. It's starting to look a little rougher, but it's still upright. Anything else you want to do? No. All right. So uh, that brings us down to Anna. <coughs> I'm going to flame blade the weakest one. Okay, go for it. You are the weakest one. Oh. Goodbye. I'll be joined. joined. What yeah, was back. it? 17. 17. 17 is a hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Ollie will get you back into rotation in just a second here. Okay. Um, would you believe three ones? <laughs> <So> three <damage. laughs> That's really impressive. So as you sit there, you swing the flame blade, uh, you kind of miss a little bit, and you just barely kind of take off a small piece of flesh, uh, barely doing any damage at all. Uh, Ollie, we skipped one of your turns, so we're just going to give you a turn right now. Okay. Uh, there are two guard drakes left, one of which uh, is starting to bleed a little bit. The other one is perfect, and they're both uh, right next to Enna and um, Altier. All right, how is everybody looking hit points-wise? Anna is hurt, but just got 10 hit points. Okay. Um, am I within touching distance of Anna? You can be. Okay. Uh, I'll run up to Anna and cast Cure Wounds at third level. Okay. Go ahead and roll uh, hit points. All right. So that's... Oh. Uh, third level should be 3d8 wounds. plus your Wisdom modifier. Plus whatever the life player bonus is. Uh, yeah, yeah, I uh, think it's another two, isn't it? Two plus a spell level. Okay, so, so that'll five, be a grand total of five. So it's wait, what was it? Humans. So three d eight. Three d eight. Gotcha. Plus okay. five. Um, plus your wisdom. Yeah. Okay, so that is nine plus eight, which is seventeen. Plus two, which is nineteen. Plus Three, which is twenty-two, and plus wisdom, which is twenty-six. All right, twenty-six hit points, Anna. Woo! I, I feel like a new woman. All right. And then he still has hyena. It's still alive. Maybe it's natural. Maybe it's Maybelline. You're not sure. Anything <laughs> else you want to do with your turn? Uh, and I'll send uh, the hyena up to attack uh, that one that's on Anna. Okay. Uh, it's going to be a natural 20. Uh, that misses. Go ahead and roll damage. Um, which is 2d6. Uh, where are my sixes? Oh, there they are. That's 11. Uh, that's 22 plus 3, which is 25. Uh, so the hyena comes over and just dives on this creature and starts ripping at its throat and at first all it's getting is this thick thick leathery skin but it just keeps going and going and eventually starts and rips out uh the esophagus uh and the windpipe uh, of this creature and the creature kind of squirms and tries to fight off against it but eventually lies down dead so that means it gets another attack it keeps oh yeah that's right <laughs> uh so it goes after the other one go for it 
that's a natural 19. That so still hits. Okay. Go ahead and roll damage. You will not six. be able to kill this one. I would guarantee it. Well, it's six plus three, so it's nine damage total. Uh, okay. All right. It's uh, hyena time, uh, or it's uh, Gardrake time. They're going to attack the hyena first with a bite. Uh, twenty-one. Yeah, it hits or twenty-three actually, and Still then hits. a tail attack. For 12. That's the armor class, so that hits. Alright, so you take 7 piercing damage from the bite, 6 bludgeoning damage from the tail for a grand total of 13 damage. Towards me, towards me or the hyena? The hyena. Okay, gotcha. The hyena so just hyena? ripped out uh, the windpipe of the other guard drake. It seems like a threat even to a beast. Okay. Is that hyena still alive? Oh yeah, it's still alive. <laughs> it's okay. got a decent amount of hit points, and I don't think it's it's only been hit like four or five times. No, it's got some serious damage, but it's it's still alive. I know it just poofs out of existence, but I don't um, want it to die. Due to the fact <laughs> that uh, you were gone for a little bit, it's actually your turn again. Oh, cool. Um, let's see. I'll send. I'll, Use the height. Go ahead and do the hyena to his attack right now. Okay. Uh, that's uh, 16. Uh, 16 does hit. Roll damage. Okay. <coughs> that's two sixes. That's uh, 12 plus 3 is 15. Why do you make me do hard math? Don't me too. All right, so it goes there, and it scratches, and it claws, and it bites, and it looks like it's doing damage, but again, this, this Gardrake has such thick skin. Um, what else do you want to know? Uh, let's see. Am I, can I touch the Drake right now? Yeah, you were right next to uh, Anna, who was right next to the Drake, so. Okay, cool. Uh, let me check what this one's real quick to spell. Um Alright, I'm gonna cast Inflict Wounds at a uh, third level. Okay. Is that a save or. Oh, crap. It's, I an, it's an attack roll, spell okay. attack. It's, it's touch. Yeah, it's a spell attack. There's there's Did a you... roll involved somewhere. It'll say in the spell, it either says oh, make yeah, a melee yeah. spell attack or it'll say they make a save. Yeah, magic right, missile. Yeah, melee yeah melee attack. Attack. so you're you're making a uh, an attack roll with your spell attack bonus. Uh, that's a nineteen. Nineteen does hit. Roll damage. Okay, so third five d ten. Ow. No, it's only four. No, it's three d ten for first, for uh, second, wounds. third. Inflict wounds. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong numbers on my spell sheet. Um, Incoming five ones. <laughs> Shut up! Don't do that. <laughs> Same team. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I hate you. Why'd you say that? <laughs> Let's see. That's ten. Eleven. That's twenty-one. Twenty-two. Necrotic. Yeah. Uh, so as you sit there, uh, and you reach out and you see this kind of black energy kind of course through, uh, your arm, you feel the symbol on your arm pulse even, uh, louder and more ferociously as this energy pulses through it into the creature. You see these boils and, and skin necrotize as you touch it. Uh, and the creature itself is now bleeding very heavily, but it's still upright. Lillian, you're up. All right, go for it. Making it aggro. That will be eighteen. Definitely hits. Roll damage. <coughs> Five, 
Fourteen. You collect yet another head of a dead creature. <laughs> uh, no, it was just those three. Um, as you guys look around, I have to go back to the page where it actually shows what it is that you guys are doing. You're not in the hunting lodge. You're in the castle. You see to the north... Uh, so, uh, where you are, you have a tower in the center of this keep, uh, that there is a door into, uh, that you can go there. To the northeast, uh, there's a tower with, like, a, uh, 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 a doorway. It looks like a door used to be there. Um, and, uh, then there is a door to the west. That lizard folk told us northwest. So where do you guys want to go? Yeah. It's up to I you. We wanna, I think we want to go in the direction where the lizard folk pointed that he knew the dragon kneelers were. Yeah. Okay. He did point to the area that you guys went to. So basically the other side of the, the courtyard, that was where he pointed. So you guys technically did go where the dragon kneelers were. You don't see any cultist, but guard dragons uh, and cultists kind of go hand in hand. Because well, he said this that room is important to him, and then the uh, northwest is where he knew that they were. So we wanted to head northwest, I believe. Sorry, just looking over to see how all of this works. Well, anyway, you've got a uh, door to the west, door to uh, the inner uh, kind of uh, tower, and then there's a tower to the northeast that doesn't have a door anymore, but it looks like there was a door there at one point. Can you hear me, Jody? I can hear you now. Okay, um, we wanted to go in the direction the lizard folk pointed the other one, because he pointed in two different directions. Uh, oh. so he said one was the room that was important to them, and then he pointed where he said that there might be... Yes, the you are the... currently there. He pointed to the door you just went through to fight the oh. guard drakes. I thought he pointed out two doors, my bad. He did point out two doors. You went to the first door that was important to them. That's where you found the dagger of Vagadarm. Pointed to another doorway. That was where you fought the guard drakes. That was all the information you got from him. Yes. So there's one tower with closed doors, one tower where there's like there used to be a doorway, and then there's a doorway, correct? So there is a central tower that has a door. There is a tower in the northeast corner of the keep, of the entire keep. No doorway, but it looks like there used to be one. And then there is a door to the west. For some reason, I say the central tower. I don't know about the rest of you. Fine with me. Unless yeah. you can, like, sense magic or something, Baldus. I'm pretty sure that'll ping everywhere, but that'll just burn another spell slot. Yeah. So lead the way out here. All right, let's head towards the central tower. Okay. Right. The entrance to the main keep is raised three steps above the level of the inner ward. A stout wooden door and good repair bars it, but the door is never locked or barred under normal circumstances. This front chamber is a small version of the Great Hall with a few tables and benches that are seldom used. Spiral stairs lead up to the second floor. 
<laughs> so if you guys would like you can go in the spiral uh you there's spiral stairs that go up or there's a door in here to the south that goes to another room your call out here I'll just follow you oh, why did I be all of a sudden no one else is saying anything um i i I'm gonna go up the stairs all right, so going up the stairs. Is doo, 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 doo. Man, there's a lot of rooms here. Second level of the keep is occupied entirely by sitting room and office, a small hearth along the western wall provides seat, a writing desk, a large padded chair, and a bench are drawn up near the hearth, otherwise the room is largely empty. Uh, and you see here, uh, again, a door, uh, to the east. And I have to see, is there a third level to that? And the spiral staircase keeps going up. I mean, do you guys want to throw open these doors? I mean, it's up to you. Up to you guys. I'm not going to be opening any doors in the front lines. So we're going to check out the door first? Yeah, I guess I'll open a door. Okay. To the east. Okay. <laughs> Uh, one is a sleeping chamber furnished with a bed, a carpet, a carpet drip table with a wash basin and grooming supplies and a stool rugs cover most of the floor. A raven in a large cage squawk cage squawks loudly enough to be heard in the outer ward. If a stranger enters the chamber and the squawking awakens and draws cultists and dragons from two R and two T to the tower. Which doesn't matter right now, because they're dealing with a riot. Da, da, da. I'll just do a quick scan of the room before I move on. Go ahead and uh, make me an investigation chest. Uh, 26. Uh, the rug, uh, you notice, uh, seems to... Uh, uh, seems to have been moved recently. I will point that out to the stronger people of my group. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I hear you fine. But I'm not one of the stronger people of the group. Alright, can you... I'll, I'll help him move the rug. I'll help too. Oh, oh. It's a rug, like anyone can move it. As you move it, uh, <laughs> you s notice that there's a loose floorboard uh, uh, that was hidden partially by the rug. I will prop it open. As you prop Take it open, traps, uh, you see a uh, small chest in there with a lock on it. I just point at point Altier at it and be like, hey... I'll thing. check it for I'll check it for traps first. Uh, make me an investigation check. Uh, fourteen. Uh, you detect no traps. I'll try to pick it. Okay. Uh, let's see here, do the steep one. Uh, that's seven plus eight, so fifteen. Uh, click. It opens up. You find two hundred gold pieces, two hundred silver pieces. And ten precious stones worth a hundred gold pieces each. Whoa. Uh, yeah, I tossed that into Emma's bag of holding him. Just like, let's keep moving. <laughs> All right, so you have a spiral staircase going both up and down. You have been below it. You guys want to just keep heading up? Yep. It's the only option right yeah. now. All right. Yeah. 
Uh, this is, what is this? Oh, I have to actually go to the third floor to see what it is. It is you. All right, so as you guys uh, come in, all right. So as you guys uh, as you guys come in, uh, you are immediately uh, kind of blown away. Uh, at the room itself. The room itself uh, is very dome-shaped. Uh, you see a strange contraption uh, on the far wall uh, that actually has like a window opening that it, it goes out of uh, and littered uh, across the wall itself, uh, across the roof itself are these pinpoints of light and things like that um, in the shapes of stars and other things like that. Um, you get the idea that this is possibly an observatory. Um, as you guys uh, are standing there uh, kind of in awe of what you're looking at, because um, Valdis would probably be the only person that has ever seen an observatory before. Um, and even then, this is a, a relatively ancient one, and the contraption on the, uh, uh, the far wall is a very unique and very special contraption that only a few people would probably know what it is. Um, as you guys are sitting there, you see four hatches on the top roof uh, open, and you hear <laughs> as four large, monstrous creatures with large um, uh, gray stone wings and claws and these uh, gruesome, vicious uh, visages uh, looking at you uh, come forward and get ready at some attack. <laughs> And that is actually where we are going to leave it for tonight. I think we chose the wrong power, boys. <laughs> so, uh, thank you to everyone that was watching either uh, here on Twitch. Uh, again, if you want to watch live, uh, we normally start uh, 8.30 Central Time, uh, ev uh, uh, basically every other Tuesday night. Um, uh, the campaign is, is basically one or two sessions away from being completely complete. Um, so it's going to get more and more exciting and more and more crazy stuff is going to happen very, very quickly here. Um, these guys will get to deal with the ramifications of their action uh, in the next time. Otherwise, follow me on Twitter, I'm at Trina Jody. Follow me here on Twitch. Uh, or if you want to see this or any of the other episodes of uh, Tyranny of Dragons, it's all uploaded to my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash Trina Jody. Um, anyway, that's all for me today, and I will see you guys next time. All right? Bye-bye.